Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zenas Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at Beth Page Black Golf Course, home of the 2025 Ryder Cup. I'm with James Robertson from HBE, who's one of the global suppliers for the Ryder Cup. Uh, James, you've got a long and kind of complicated title, so I'm not going to try <laughs> to remember what it is. So just a, a little intro on yourself and what you do for HBE and what your role is with this Ryder Cup. Yeah, so uh, I'm CTO for Media, Entertainment, Hospitality and Sports. So I spend uh, my days worrying about our uh, customers in this space, uh, looking at their business needs, looking at their outcomes, trying to understand what they need to do and what they need to accomplish for, you know, pulling a great events like this around the globe together. Yeah, I met with Michael Cole, who's the CTO of the Ryder Cup Europe, uh, earlier today, we, in, uh, in fact, he briefed all uh, all of his press, and he talked about how this was like the first um, AI-enabled Ryder Cup. Yeah. And when you first heard that, what did that mean to you? Well, I, you know, I think if you look at the history that we've had with the Ryder Cup over the last few years, right, going back to when we first started to connect the course in Paris in 2018, you know, basically we got to a point where connectivity became table stakes. So how do we engage the fans even more? How do we provide more information, more understanding um, to what's really going on on the course on a day-to-day, moment-by-moment business? And really that's how do we take data, live data, and bring it to life, make it actionable for the outcomes that the, the Ryder Cup team need day in and day out. And so that's really, we've stepped up the game from just supplying kind of base core connectivity, making sure that the Wi-Fi coverage is complete, making sure the fiber works, the networking works, and now looking at it in terms of how do we create AI driven outcomes that are actually going to influence their business. Yeah, and so a big part of what you're providing here, of course, is the network. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're a network guy, yep. right? Aruba is a big part of this. Uh, and talk about what are some of the AI features within uh, the central product that are being used to help manage this environment? Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and why were those important? Right. So we're using uh, HPE Networking's uh, Aruba Central um, as the orchestration and management engine for all of the network devices around the course. And that's running in the cloud. It has AI underpinnings telling us, telling us from the data what's really going on in the infrastructure, uh, looking at it moment by moment, looking at commonalities, problems that are occurring, uh, uh, giving the network engineers uh, an understanding of really, in, in real terms, what they need to do to fix it. Right? So it's not just, hey, this device has gone down, we've lost power in this part of the course or whatever's happened. Right? It's like, we're seeing this and we know how to fix it because the AI is looking at all the data from all the data points and going, if you do this, this will make a better outcome, this will improve the network uh, in different ways. And to be clear, yeah. this year the network plays um, a bigger role in the Ryder Cup than we've ever seen before. I don't think people really realize that from ticketing to being able to purchase things. Yeah. To, uh, in fact, just uh, I was looking at the Ryder Cup app. They have some cool. In fact, I found my way back here from 18 uh, <laughs> using the mapping feature yeah. on that. And yeah. if the network's not available, I'm assuming none of this stuff works. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is basically a smart city. Yeah. Right. That is being put together in about four weeks and will be torn down in about 48 hours right after the event. And so, you know, doing something of this complexity and being able to create the right environment from a technology standpoint that can deliver the outcomes for the business, right? Uh, to make sure that we're able to supply the needs of the fans, but also the needs of the back office, right? Moment by moment and make it as reliable as possible. It takes a lot of coordination, a lot of planning. And with the help of AI, we underpin it all so we can really see what's going on in the network in real time and react appropriately. Yeah, now where I sort of agree and disagree in the smart city, with the smart city, I think there's a lot of predictability around sure. what people do. Uh, and in fact, I know you you do a lot of stadiums, and Michael and I talked about this, but here yeah. you've got, uh, uh, you know, because there's only four groups out in the course at any one time, right? Mm. And so they're constantly in motion. Yes. Right? And yeah. so that's, I think, really what makes it difficult here. Is yeah. That, and uh, uh, and yeah. when you thought about kind of network deployment, how do you build a network for that where all the fans are clustered around four holes, then they're going to move. Right. And, right. Like right. That, that, that to me seems like a, uh, a networking problem that you don't face very often. Well, it's a bandwidth management nightmare. Let's, yeah. let's put it like that, because, you know, you, you really want to have a, a stable network that's, you, you know, across everything that's ubiquitous and it feels the same. But what we're having to do is, again, take that data, the telemetry that we're getting out of the network in that moment and look at it in terms of what the capacity needs around the course are. So able to basically retune network bandwidth and, and frequency and spectrum to make sure that we're getting the coverage when we have literally thousands of people gathering around a single hole, 
Yeah. yeah. And it's not just networking provided, right? There was uh, an AI private cloud here. Yes. Uh, what was that? In fact, uh, I believe um, uh, Michael said it was the first AI private cloud that he believes was used at a sporting event. Yes. And what's that being used for? So basically, we're, we're looking at other analytics. So the network is one component that's providing analytics to the system. But we're looking at other analytics for crowd management, everything from ticket flow uh, to even merchandise uh, tent to food and beverage sales, right, to even weather conditions so that we can help the Ryder Cup team on the ground predict their needs in real time. So if we have a weather event, people are going to start to gather in different parts of the course under tents, under cover. Um, that may drive additional changes in not only the network in terms of the gathering and the capacity requirements in those areas, but it could also mean that uh, you know people are looking for umbrellas, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. And they need to get to the merchandise yeah, tent. Yeah. And so we need to be able to inform the merchandise uh, team, hey, make sure there's plenty of umbrellas ready to go or plenty of ponchos ready to go or if the president shows up or if the president <laughs> shows up <laughs> yeah which might happen so. yeah all right and uh when you think out to 2027 yes what are some of the things you're working on today that you know obviously are future looking things that we might see in a couple yeah. of years when we move this back to europe well I, I, the, the big thing is we're going to get a lot of learnings out of this because of all of the telemetry and all of the data that we're gathering that ai uh, model while it's informing everything that's going on right in the moment now we're going to be able to use that data set to allow us to predict what we need for Ireland, for the Ryder Cup in Ireland. So we're going to be able to, to some extent, digital twin ourselves uh, using this data yeah. as a backdrop of this event to understand how we're going to walk into what we're going to see in Ireland in 27. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's going to be very important for us to then look at it in terms of not only network coverage, but what potentially we can do in terms of additional capabilities to the Ryder Cup to make, again, the event as seamless and streamlined as possible. Yeah, I don't think people realize how manual things are. You gave me a good example where there's, you can hear them in the background, there's some, a lot of generators running. Yeah. And people have to like manually look at it and decide when to fill it, they run out. but a simple IoT sensor could let somebody exactly. know, hey, you need to go put gas in it. Yes, yeah. that's, that's yeah. another network enabled service that could remove a lot of that manual heavy lifting. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, These yeah. are going to be learnings that we take out of this event, right? Uh, and and apply to future events. Yeah. You know, when the, when well, the physical stadiums, world, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. When the physical world is going to impact the infrastructure world, right? And the outcomes for the business, um, you know, we need to be able to make sure that we're, we're connecting all the dots. So it's not just the components of the network, it's now the components of the power grid that go into behind the scenes and making this thing happen. All right, last question, your predictions, who's going to win? Well, being... With the, with the accent you've got. I know, <laughs> being a, a European by birth, but a yeah. US citizen yeah. by yeah. Uh, uh, association. You're calling for a tie. I'm going to call for a tie. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> well, let's hope that doesn't happen because I don't think any of you have with that. So. And actually, that would mean the U.S. wins again. That's so. right. Exactly. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. Uh, I think, you know, being, being its own course, the U.S. always seems to say the course is up where, it, you know, bombs away right. uh, typically win. So, right. Uh, all right. Anything else you want to add? About no, that? no. It's going to be a great yeah. event. We're it really is. excited about getting through day one. Yeah. And we're going to get learnings out of this that are going to impact us for the rest of the week. Well, this was the practice day, so tomorrow it really starts. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. So, on behalf of James Robertson from HPE, I'm Zines Caravalla. ZK Research from Beth Page Black saying thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZK.